today I thought I would sit down and do a tag because I just got done filming one of my looks for the 10 looks with the blue blood palette so that's what's on my eyes if you are wondering and the tag that I'll be doing today is created by a girl named Maria her YouTube channel is called Agape Love Girl I saw this tag about I want to say a month ago now, maybe it's like three weeks, and I've kind of wanted to do it since, but I keep delaying doing these tags because I have other videos that I want to film first, so I thought today would be a good time to sit down and film this tag, and it has a lot of questions, so let's just get straight into it. Question number one. People tend to think beauty YouTubers are expert, or should be, at doing makeup. Of course that's not always true. What is one thing you struggle with doing? Side note, even if you are a pro MUA, I bet there are still things you struggle with, so please share. Now clearly I am not an expert at makeup, I have no education whatsoever in makeup. I've only been doing makeup on myself for about like two years now, two and a half years maybe, so I still feel like I'm such a makeup baby and I don't really know what I'm doing, but I really enjoy playing with makeup and having fun with makeup. and. The thing with me I feel like is I don't try to do things the way they're supposed to be done. I just kind of do it my way and the way that I feel like doing things. But certain things that I definitely struggle with doing is winged eyeliner, but that's just because I have hooded eyes. And honestly, winged eyeliner just usually doesn't really work on people with hooded eyes. And I am just being stubborn and I still try to make it work, even though I'm pretty sure I'll never be able to perfect it because it's just like it's not meant for my eye shape, you know what I mean? So the, I feel like the things that I struggle with the most are things that might not look good on me to begin with. So I don't know. I mean, like I said, I'm not really a perfectionist, so I don't care that much if something doesn't look like perfect. So for the most part, I'm pretty happy with what I'm doing and I don't feel like I have any like huge struggles. Maybe another struggle would be just to overline my lips because I feel like I'm not very good at overlining my lips. But I mean, that's something that will probably get better with practice, hopefully. And it's not really something that I overline too much, but like I do have small lips and I do like my lipstick to show when I have lipstick on. So yeah, that's one of the things that I kind of feel like I'm always working on trying to perfect the shape of my lips because my lips are very small on top and they also have like very sharp peaks up here so I have to make them round because that's the shape on my lips that I prefer the most so I guess I would say those things. <laughs> Question number two. On that note, are there any makeup techniques you would like to improve or learn how to do? I guess I have other answers for this question. At first I was like, you know what, I just answer that, but actually some things that I would like to learn how to do is to use more cream products because that is not really something that I have played around with a lot. I would like to kind of learn how to cream contour. I did actually buy a dark foundation stick the other day for Makeup Revolution that I wanted to start using to learn how to cream contour with. And I also do have a couple of cream blushes, whether they're in a palette or separately, that I would like to get some use out of. But I'm just not the kind of person who likes to use cream products. I feel like it's just an extra step and it's like a pain in the ass. And I also just don't really like to spend that much time on my base makeup because I think that eyes and lips are the most fun part of makeup or any color product for that matter. So like blush and highlight is fun too. But I also don't really ever reach for like liquid highlights or cream blushes like I said because it's just, I don't know, I just never do. But it is one of those things that I would definitely like to kind of learn how to do. Question number three. Are there any makeup looks, styles, trends, or technique you absolutely refuse to do or follow on yourself? I don't think there's anything that I refuse to do, but there are things that I just don't care to do, like fake lashes. I really don't care to wear fake lashes. Honestly, I feel like my lashes are pretty good to begin with. And again, it's just an extra step. Like, I just, I don't feel like I need that, especially because I don't do anything fancy. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm going out, I'm going to like the grocery store or something, like, I don't need to put on false lashes for that. And I don't do my makeup for YouTube or for Instagram. I do makeup for myself and to wear makeup. Now, I'm probably not going to go out wearing this lipstick after, but like, this eye look, like, hell yeah, of course I'm gonna go shopping with this or do whatever it is I need to do today. But for the most part, like, I never do my makeup for YouTube. So there aren't certain steps that I would do only because I'm on YouTube and the only steps that I do is steps that I would do if I was just going out and doing my makeup without filming it anyway. Question number four. Are there any makeup trends or styles that you used to dislike but now love or vice versa that now you don't care for anymore? This one is tough. Is there anything that I used to do that I don't like to do anymore? Not that I can think of. What was the other part of this question? Are there any trends or styles that you used to dislike but now love? I'm having a hard time with this one. I guess one thing that I would say, I didn't really understand the hype over like highlighting, but I kind of get highlighting now. Like I think it's fun. I'm still not like the biggest fan of like 
super blinding highlights, but I do really see how a maybe a colored highlight or something can really enhance the eye look and the look in general. So I do really appreciate that. Oh, one thing that I used to hate was bullet lipsticks probably just because I hadn't really given it enough of a chance and like I said early in the video I have very small lips so it's really hard for me to get a good application with a bullet lipstick so that was one thing that I kind of just shied away from but now that I've kind of started playing around more with bullet lipsticks I'm going to really like them because honestly they're just so comfortable yes they suck to put on and I still struggle with it and usually I need to have a lip liner to make the line look good or at least a lip brush to kind of define or fix the lines afterwards but I do actually kind of enjoy bullet lipsticks now, and that's not something I thought I would ever say. Question number five. Are there any beauty slash makeup trends that most people hate that you maybe secretly like? I don't know if I would say secretly because I'm very outspoken about what I do like, I feel like, but I'm a huge fan of having bold lips with bold eyes. That's like the first thing that comes to mind when I think of this question. I think that having a bold eye look and pairing it with a bold lip can really make a statement and I think that looks really, really cool. Obviously, it depends on the lip shades and what you have on your eyes and like making sure that they kind of go together, but if you can get a good combination, I really feel like it looks awesome and I don't really understand why people say you can't do that. Like, I just, I don't get it. Question number six. Are there any makeup rules or stereotypes that bother you? Honestly, I feel like there shouldn't be any rules to makeup. Whenever someone says, you can't do this, but you can do that, I'm like, no, that's bullshit. Of course you can do whatever you want to do. It's your face, it's makeup, it washes off. Like, have fun with it. You know what I mean? Like, just because someone has hooded eyes or whatever doesn't mean that they can't do this or they can't do that, or doesn't mean that you can't put shimmers in your crease if you really like to. I like that look personally, but it's not something that I implement in my own makeup routine a lot just because it creates a lot of fallout and because I like to do my face first, but I love that look in other people and I don't see anything wrong with having a shimmer shade in the crease. Like, I just, I don't understand. I will say that one thing that kind of bothers me is when I see bigger YouTubers say that lashes complete the look and that a look isn't complete without having false lashes on. Like that really gets to me because I definitely don't feel that way at all. Like I feel like if I put on enough mascara, like my look is still going to look good. Like what I'm wearing today, most people would wear false lashes with and I still think my look looks pretty good without false lashes. I really don't think that, uh, here's the thing. I think a lot of people who say that are people who aren't that good at blending maybe and they feel like if they mess up with their eye looks that lashes are going to fix that because it would cover it up. I think that's kind of where I'm going with this or maybe I'm just like salty because I don't know how to put on false lashes but I really don't feel like falsies are necessary with any look really. Like maybe if you're gonna post on Instagram and you're trying to become Instagram famous maybe you should start wearing false lashes but that's not me. <laughs> Question number seven. What old news makeup products do you still love and use on the regular? Like I said, I've only really been into makeup for about two years now, so I haven't really had any makeup products for like a very long period of time that I keep using and using and using, but I definitely have some items in my collection that are kind of like more on the older side, I guess, like the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer, I love that, as well as the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, I love that one as well. Those are like the two that comes to mind that I can really think of. Other than that, I don't really think I have any that are very like old school that people used to call their holy grails that I still use. I don't really think I do. Question number eight. It's possible that there may be specific YouTubers that inspired you to start a YouTube channel, but let's talk about what, if anything, YouTubers inspired you not to do. I will say this, I'm not going to name names or really mention anything like out there because I know a lot of the people who watch with me have channels too and I know a lot of my friends on here do things that I've learned from them not to do like I don't mean this to be like mean or anything or feel like I am better but there are certain things that I look at when I watch other people's videos and I kind of go like oh that's annoying like I don't want to do this I don't want to do that so I don't do it in my own videos because I get annoyed watching it in others but like I said I really don't want to mention things because I don't want things to get personal like I have so many friends here on YouTube that I just don't want to start anything you know what I mean so there's definitely things that I picked up from other people doing them and me not liking it that made me not want to do it myself even though in the beginning maybe I was doing it and maybe I've thought about doing it but they've kind of changed my mind and made me not do it. Question number nine. What beauty content do you love creating the most? Anything that has me putting on eyeshadow. I just I love eyeshadow so much. I love sitting down especially with a new palette. 
I want to say the first impressions are probably my favorite videos to do. I also do really enjoy making my 10 look videos even though they suck to edit but they are so fun to make and I always have so much fun like getting to really learn to love a palette and really figuring out what a palette is all about and what a palette is actually capable of because I don't do that with all of my palettes because obviously it takes a long time to really get pushed enough to be creative to come up with that many looks with one palette and that's something that I really enjoy. I enjoy the challenge of coming up with new things and I also really like doing my challenge videos where I use like every shade in the palette or like my palette bingos or anything that forces me to be creative in a way that I wouldn't have done if I was just sitting down doing my makeup. Question number 10. Is there any content that you create based on audience requests or interests that you actually don't really like or prefer to create? Ooh, that's very interesting. Come to think of it, I don't actually think that I do. I want to say like maybe my monthly haul videos are kind of boring to make, but I love watching hauls personally and I know that a lot of you guys love watching hauls and it's also just a good way for me to kind of show what came into my collection that month even though it kind of sucks to like pull out all the products and make sure that I like write lists every month and just, you know, I'm not a very organized person so when I'm forced to be organized it's kind of like feels like homework and I hated homework, I hated school so <laughs> maybe that's why I don't really like making those videos and I want to say like I prefer to make videos where I put on makeup over chatty videos. I've said this before but my chatty videos seem to get a lot of views for whatever reason. I don't really understand why but you know, because of that, I definitely tend to do more chatty videos than I probably would have if they didn't get that many views. But if you guys like them, I'm going to keep making them. So, you know, I'm here to make you happy. I'm here to entertain you as well as I am here to, you know, have fun with my channel myself. Question number 11. How often do you film? Um, every day. Every day, no fail, unless I'm sick or something like that, I don't film, but I definitely film every single day. I'm not one to like film in batch. I don't know. I just. I have a hard time staying motivated or staying interested for more than like two videos or filming for like an hour and a half then I'm kind of like I'm over it but like I'm really excited in the beginning but the more time kind of goes on I'm like okay I'm done like I can't do any more today <laughs> so that's why I can't end up filming every single day and then I usually also edit every single day because I mean I put up videos pretty much every day so I don't really have a choice. Question number 12 do you have a job outside of YouTube? No, I do not. But if you want to know why, you can watch my My Story video and I will link that up in the corner for you. I don't really want to get into that right now. Question number 13. What beauty content do you enjoy consuming or watching the most? I would say I really enjoy watching first impression videos because those are like my favorites to film. I also really enjoy watching challenge videos and I really wish that more people would do those. I also really enjoy watching chatty videos like this one, like tags, I think those are so fun. Or anything that really makes me get to know the creator a little bit more. I also really like uh, chatty get ready with me's if there's an interesting topic that is talked about. Even if not, even if someone's just sitting down like talking about their lives. I really enjoy watching that but those kind of videos are not really something that I enjoy making myself unless I have a specific thing that I'm showing you or I'm trying new products and stuff like that. Like I don't really like the or it's not that I don't like sharing things in my life, it's just that I don't have a life that's very interesting that I want to share. And I don't mean that to complain at all because I mean mostly I just do YouTube and I love doing YouTube. But outside of that, I also don't really like, even if small things happen in my life, it's not like I want to go tell people about it. I'm just not that kind of person. Like, you know, if something happened to my neighbor and like their house burned down, I'm not gonna come, come on YouTube and be like, oh my god, like guess what just happened today? I don't know, it's probably just me and that was a very dramatic example and probably not something that would ever happen, but like if something like happens outside of my life that is irrelevant to what is happening on my channel, I don't really tend to talk about it. And I'm also not the kind of person who will like text my friends and be like, hey, guess what just happened? And it's really not that interesting, but it's just like a tiny little thing. Like I just don't really tend to do that. <laughs> Question number 14. Any non-makeup channels you love? Not many. Um, Shane Dawson, that's pretty much it I think that I watch for non-beauty channels on YouTube if I can think of it. Actually come to think of it though, I do watch a couple of like eating disorder recovery channels because I do have a pretty bad relationship with food. I never really had like an eating disorder per se but Food is something that I struggle with and so watching other people really tackle their fears of food and just like improving their relationship with food has been really helpful to me. 
Question number 15. Are there any makeup misconceptions because of YouTube or Instagram that you wish people knew the truth about or that you hope to change with your channel? See, I want to say that the goal with my channel is just to make people have more fun with makeup and not to be scared of makeup and not feel like they have to put on makeup just to look pretty or to change themselves to look better, but as a way to express themselves. Other than that, I don't really think I have an answer to this question. I mean, obviously there are things that like bother me about Instagram and stuff, but I also don't really, it's not a goal for my channel to like change any of that. So I feel like that's kind of irrelevant to the question here. One thing that do really annoys me though is like all the photoshopping and face tuning that's going on. I think that is so unnecessary and I wish that people would stay away from that. Like there's a reason why girls have such bad body image and like that's definitely part of it. And I really wish that that would change, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. But like I really try my best to not edit my pictures at all, except just to change up the lighting a little bit to make the colors more true to life. But other than that, I really dislike highly edited photos and it also makes people feel bad about their makeup skills because who knows what people have done when they take a close-up of their eye look and maybe their eyeliner is looking a bit wonky and then they just go into Photoshop and they fix it to make it look perfect. Like of course people are going to feel bad about not being able to do winged liner like that person in the photo does and I think that's bullshit. Like I wish, I just, I wish, I wish photoshopping and photo editing didn't exist but I also see the place for it and that it needs to be there so yeah, I, I don't really know what else to say about that other than I just, I, I'm not a huge fan. Question number 16. Have you ever felt unqualified or like a bad beauty YouTuber because you didn't do things just like every other beauty girl? I don't think so because I didn't start my channel with the intention of becoming a like very typical beauty girl. Like look at me, do I look like a beauty girl? No, I just do my own thing because I love makeup and I love sharing my love of makeup and I love to share the creative aspect of makeup and that's mainly what my channel is about. Obviously, as you guys know, it's just about having fun with makeup. So I don't really feel bad about doing that at all. I don't think I should. Question number 17. If you could collaborate with a brand, which would it be and what would you create? I think this is pretty obvious. I would love to create an eyeshadow palette with Juvia's Place. I love Juvia's Place so much. They've been my favorite brand now for probably over a year or ever since I tried their first eyeshadow palette, I've just fallen in love with the brand and I just love them so much. So that was a pretty easy question for me. Question number 18. Would you rather collaborate with a brand or create your own makeup or beauty line? I'm so sorry if my dog is barking right now, but I'm running low on battery, so I have to answer this. Um, I think I would... See, I don't know. If I had the money to start my own makeup brand and the people to help me make the products that I wanted to make that I would trust and have like a facility and an office and like everything that I would need to start my own brand, of course I would do that. But like... Odds are that's never going to happen, so I don't even like think about that. Like that's not really a dream that I have. I would love to do a collaboration with a brand though, because then I could kind of have a say, but I would leave that part of actually making the makeup up to them so it wouldn't be like a big deal. So I would definitely want to do a collaboration if I could, but I mean, who wouldn't want to have their own makeup brand? Come on now. Question number 19. Because your average booty guru doesn't always like to do this or give credit where credit is due, it's shout out time. Name three beauty content creators you think deserve more followers or recognition. I just want to shout out my friends here, honestly. Like, my first shout out is going to be to Prue LaRue. Uh, her name is Prue. She is my best friend here on YouTube. I just love her with my whole heart. We've become so close ever since we started talking about. I don't even know when, six months ago maybe? It's been a very long time, but like we basically talk every single day on Instagram and I really feel like she deserves more followers. I will of course link her up in the cards and down in the description box, but she is so funny. I love her sense of humor so much. She has really good content on her channel. She has really funny content on her channel. She actually made a video recently where she made eyeshadow brushes out of her cat's fur. Like who does that? Like that is hilarious. Like go check her out. Like she really deserves some more love. Another one that I actually found very recently, her name is Jessica Pine. She is the sweetest. Like she is the only channel that I think I have ever started a video and then actually subscribed like five minutes into the video. Like I just felt a connection with her. You know, sometimes that just happens. Like it takes a lot for me to actually subscribe to someone without even knowing like what the rest of their content is. But 
I just felt something with her and I really feel like she has a very good presence on camera. She seems like such a sweetheart. I like her videos a lot even though our makeup styles are very different, like completely different, but I like her as a person enough that I really enjoy her channel. So I will link her up there as well as down in the description box. And someone else that I feel like is extremely underrated. Now, there are so many people I could name in this question, and if I didn't mention you, I am so sorry. But the next person I want to mention is Anya. I have collaborated with her before, and I just think that her content is amazing. She posts every single day. She's a student. She has a lot on her plate. Somehow, she manages to come up with really good content. Her videos are really well edited. She's so original. She does a lot of chatty videos that are very thought-provoking, and just like her makeup style is so different than a lot of other people that I have ever seen on YouTube. I really don't think that there are any other channels that I can compare to hers, and I just think that she puts in so much work to her channel, and she has yet to hit a subscribers and I would love it if you guys would go over check her out subscribe to her tell her that I sent you because she really deserves the credit and the recognition so go ahead and check her out please I would love it if you did so those are going to be the three that I'm going to name in this video those were like the first that came to my mind when I read this question like I said there were so many other people that I could have mentioned and I will link you to another channel that I did in December where I shouted out all of my top 10 favorite youtubers I think I will link that up in the corner as well so everything that's going to be in the sidebar here is going to be only other people's channels that I really do recommend and that video that I talked about. And those were all the questions in the not your basic booty guru tag. I don't even know if I said the name of that correctly or if I even said the name of this tag in the beginning of the tag. If I did not, I am so sorry, but I'm sure editing and that is going to put something in there so that you know what this tag is actually called. So yeah, that's going to sum up this tag. If you have a channel and you want to do this tag, I will leave all the questions down below as well as the creator of the tag. Of course, I will link her down below and up here. And yeah, that's going to sum up today's video. I hope you enjoy this little chatty video about the beauty community and all that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and I will see you in my next one. Bye.